Hey, Carl. Hey, Pip. Oh, hey, Claude. Oh, God, it's your nosy neighbor. No, she's not nosy. So what's in the box? <laughs> it's a cat. See you around. Oh, oh. Could I see? I love a kitty. Oh. He's so cute. Watch out, Carl Scratches. He never has before. The cat's named Carl. Oh, isn't that going to be a little confused? Adorable. Well, you know, we were totally stumped for a name. Oh, well, where'd you get him? Corner at Garfield and Otis, behind that bar, Mr. Whiskers. Uh, the poor guy was just lying next to some old socks trying to nibble on a muffin. So we bought a cat from him. Well, listen, you want to come in and celebrate? I've got a bottle of wine that somebody sent to Will Butler. Oh, I bet your apartment's filled with fancy stuff from Will Butler, huh? Thanks for the offer, but, you know, we got to get Carl all set up. Yes. But, uh, hey, you know, maybe we should all have dinner tomorrow night. You know, fold Viv into the group. That's a great idea. Let's, let's fold her right in there. Hope she doesn't get bent out of shape. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll, uh, I'll just pick the restaurant. It'll be good for you to get out, Claude, because, you know, sitting at home alone with the wine is a little sad. <laughs> Carl has found someone. Carl the cat? <laughs> no, the guy. <laughs> you know, I told them that this would be confusing. You're the only one mixing them up, Claude. <laughs> anyway, I'm just not sure that I like Viv. You know, at all. <laughs> What's not to like? Oh, I guess I could start with the fact that she hates me. <laughs> I think you should put that aside, Claude. I mean, that woman's got a lot to offer. Like, when I go for a dental cleaning where she works, she gives me gas. I don't even have to ask. And that's the basis of your friendship? No, she's funny, too. She makes me laugh. Yeah, that could just be the gas. That's a bold theory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's only been really nice to me. Lovely, really. And she's a Latina spitfire. <laughs> Look, I guess I could try harder with Viv. You know what? In fact, I am going to make it my mission to mm. like her for Carl's sake. The cat. <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> what are you doing? I'm uh, taking home a ream of paper. Just don't tell that nearsighted mop top and supplies. <laughs> Oops. You, sir, are unethical. You know, I am to teach that little thief a lesson. What can I do to make him suffer horribly? You could put super glue on his chair, and then he'd sit down, and his pants might stick, and then when he got up, they'd just rip off. <laughs> That's rough, girl. He's still a human being, Claude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, that was one of the best steaks I've ever had. You ready to take them again? Obviously. You know how they make that beef taste so good? Steroids and antibiotics. None of this grass-fed, organic stuff. You give a cow free range, you know what it's gonna do? Wander off to a seminar where they teach it how to taste like crap. You're all man, aren't you? Listen, if I go mad cow on you, baby, you just remember moments like these. Did you talk with the maitre d' at Tatham's about getting your picture up on the wall? You want me to get a headshot to them? Not photos. <laughs> I got the place covered with caricatures of celebrity customers. Nothing says you've made it like a cartoon where you've got giant earlobes and a really big schnoz. Hmm. I wonder how to get Jeb up on that wall. I wonder if he already has Mad Cow. Oh, Will's on the wall at Tatham's between Red Fox and Chuck Mangione. Claude, how did Will get his face up on the wall at Tatham's? Oh, he's got a story about that, and he doesn't need a lot of prompting. Will, Tatham's? That is a funny story. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Harry Reasoner got me up there one night in the 80s. Or was it in his 80s? 
Anyway, he mentioned on the air that he and I had lunch with Gorbachev at Tatham's, and the next day I went in, and there I was, over Tatham. Very, very funny. <laughs> Not that funny. But the way you tell it? Hmm, true. <laughs> Reservation is under Will Butler. I'm Claude Casey, and he told me to say a special hello to Arthur. Oh, when they made Arthur, they broke the mold. <laughs> that is just what Will said. Mm -hmm. And when Arthur died, they broke down and gave his job to me. <laughs> we haven't seen Will Butler in five years. Five years, really? Right this way. Viv, love the outfit. It all works. The, the shoes, the pants, the jacket, love it all. <laughs> and the nail suit. I want a martini. Don't skimp on the olives. I want you to just open that jar and go Black Hawk down with that toothpick. Martinis all around. And I'll just have a small scotch next to a very, very big scotch. They put us right beneath Will Butler's picture. Wow, you know, I had forgotten that you worked for a famous person for almost 0.5 seconds. <laughs> um, so, Viv, you're, you're a dental hygienist, right? Yep. Oh, you know, I'm having a little trouble with an old filling because my two moms had me go to a holistic dentist, so it's filled with crystallized frankincense. <laughs> no myrrh. Excuse me. Pardon me, thank you. <laughs> Lydia Weston, you've probably seen me here with my fiance, Jeb Denton, from the show Jeb's Jabs. Oh, yes, ma'am, you're a very handsome couple. <laughs> <laughs> He's handsome, and I'm drop dead. So, how do we get Jeb up on that wall? Oh, no, 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 the walls are very full, I'm afraid. Yeah, <laughs> here's the deal. Jeb's show tonight is all about steaks. Now, he's gonna mention one restaurant as having the best sirloin in New York, and you don't want the palm cited as having a better steak than Tatham's, do you? Of course not. <laughs> because they do. <laughs> you get us on Jeb's jabs, I'll get Jeb on the wall. Excellent. <laughs> Ooh, tell your artist to go easy on his big chin. I'm a little sensitive about it. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I'd love to open a steak place one day. It's gonna be very affordable. Okay quality steaks ground up on reasonably priced buns. Sounds like a burger joint. Bad idea, Carl. Restaurants always fail. And in my life, failure is for my sister, not me. Wait, wait, wait. you haven't heard the best part yet. I'm gonna name it Carl Juniors. <laughs> yeah, I, as, uh, I was named after my dad. So. I love it. Although, it does sound a little similar to Carl's Jr. <laughs> What's that? A burger chain out west. Uh, how are they doing? <laughs> I think they're doing great. So, Owen, have you figured out a way to catch Kip stealing supplies? Oh, yes, I have a plan. I'm gonna put an item that I know Kip <laughs> Desperately wants on my supply code in Kransky. <laughs> Am I right? How the hell I'm supposed to know? This is perfect. Right. Good, thank you. I'll see you. Yeah, I'll see you. Whatever. Yeah, uh huh. Well, I dodged a bullet. No, I dodged a bullet! <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Well, after dinner, Viv and I went out for coffee, and then we came back to my place, and I broke up with her, and she yelled a lot and left. Oh, and pie. We had pie. Come in. Oh, I can't believe this. I mean, you guys seem so happy. I'm good at hiding my emotions, Claude. Even now, you'd have to look very closely to know that I'm upset. Oh. Oh. Carl, so what happened? Well, here's a tip me off. What she was really saying is that she doesn't want to be a part of my future. And clearly, it was just a matter of time until she broke up with me, so I just got in there first. Why would she want to break up with you? I mean, you guys just bought a cat together. 
I get Carl every other weekend. <laughs> Listen, Claude, I'm really good at reading women. Hiding emotions, reading women, that's me. Anyway, it's too bad, but... <sighs> You sure this isn't just fear of rejection? Oh, it's definitely a fear of rejection. Yeah, yeah. And trust me, it has a firm... You need to just talk to Viv no. again. Just tell no, her you No, 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 look, look, Claude. I don't think Viv is right for me. I mean, first of all, she was gonna dump me. <laughs> I mean, she's kind of picky and not as supportive as I'd like. I mean, you think so too, right? Well, I mean, I think that she can be a little... Blunt. Blunt. It's a perfect word. That's another very good reason to dump her. God, I wish I could have called her that in a moment. What was it again? Blunt. Blunt. Yeah, that's old Viv. That's old Viv. Hey, hey, Claude, I got the coolest thing here on my cart. It's a ducky binder. This would make any assistance job so, so easy. And you know what? It would be perfect around a bachelor pad for keeping a list of available chicks in the neighborhood or whatnot. <laughs> Claude, is it okay if I leave my supply cart all by itself in this area <laughs> while you join me for a snack? A snack? Why, I would love to join you for some snacking. <laughs> Jeb Denton's office. Hold, please. Tatham's. Russell, what's the matter? Did I leave my gun there again? <laughs> really? Well, I'm thrilled. Thank you. That's fantastic, honey. You know, I spoke to Russell and arranged it. That a girl! That's why you made sure I mentioned Tatham's on the jazz. Let's celebrate. I'm gonna have dinner tonight with you and another man. Another man? Yes. The cartoon Jeb. Oh! <laughs> That's killer funny. Killer funny. Claude, Libby was going on and on about Tatham's the other day. You know, I haven't been there in a year or so. Five. Uh-huh. Make me a reservation there tonight. Talk to Arthur. Russell, uh-huh. Tell him I'm having dinner with my Japanese commercial agent. Oh, and if Hideki has any robo-puppy freebies, I'll snag you one. Oh, arigato. Hi. Hi. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh. Thought you were gonna catch me stealing your little docubinder, didn't ya? You can't catch me. I've swallowed highlighters to get him out of here. <laughs> Darn, he didn't take it. Oh, yes, he did. The docubinder was just a red herring. I put the real bait next to it, a little mini shredder, and it's gone. As gone as Ramona was last night after those martinis. <laughs> a pretty sophisticated plan. No wonder you get nothing done around here. So, what's next? Well, Kip goes home, puts yep. his feet up, he opens up his cute stolen little shredder, and tomorrow at work we're gonna see Kip in a whole new color. <laughs> what does that mean? Perhaps if you did a little less work around here, you'd know. Uh <laughs> Viv, good, I found you. What are you doing here? That airhead receptionist out there thinks I'm using the bathroom. That's my sister. Listen, I want to talk to you about Carl, because he's just miserable. Oh, well, he should be, the moron. Can't stop thinking about him. Big, dumb, sweet jerks it down. <laughs> that Carl broke up with you was because he thought you were going to break up with him first. What? I was never going to break up with him. We bought a cat together. <laughs> you know, the thing with guys like... Oh, thank you. The thing with guys like Carl, you know, they're kind of like a molar, you know? Big, strong, tooth on the outside, vulnerable, 
whatever the stuff is on the inside of the tooth on the inside. Open. Oh, thank you very much. You have a giant cavity. <laughs> I'll have Dr. Stein come in and fill it. Oh, really? Well, okay, okay. I guess since I'm here and it's free. Yeah, nobody said anything about being free. <laughs> So why did Carl think I want to dump him? He thought that your lack of interest in Carl Jr.'s meant that you didn't want to be a part of his life. Oh, he's such an idiot. I want to be a part of his life so he won't do such stupid things. Right. <laughs> you know, I've never had the gas before. And you I know, really... I cannot believe that he thought that I wanted to break up. I mean, I think about him all the time. You know, when I'm doing boring things like this, you know, how his big puppy dog eyes or how he built a shelf out of pumpkins and boards, or how he's so sweet he won't swear even in bed when I ask him to. <laughs> you know, this whole thing is very funny because this whole time I thought that you didn't like me. I don't. Why don't you? <laughs> You're a good-looking broad who lives across the hall from Carl. And you look desperate. You're one drunk phone call away from sleeping with my boyfriend. Ramona was right. You were very funny. You could have been a stand-up comedian, although no, no. You're very good at all of this. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Claude's got a big toothbrush. <laughs> all to myself. <laughs> and that's what happens when you steal. So I guess you found some wall space after all. Yes, we painted over someone with... Oh. Look, they've got me between Chuck Mangione and Red Fox. You're kidding. You know, sometimes they also draw a little one of you in the crapper. <laughs> I'm gonna go take a look. You do that. <laughs> you paint it over Will Butler? Are you trying to ruin my relationship? If Will finds out, he's gonna think that we did it on purpose and then destroy Jeb. Which would be an issue if Mr. Butler ever came in. Okay, good point, you're right. <laughs> Which he is tonight. What? <clears throat> in fact, there he is now. Oh, try the veal. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Butler, it'll be a few minutes until we have a table for you. Not a problem. Yes, it is a problem. Will Butler won't stand for these kinds of games. You'll be seated in a matter of moments, Mr. Butler, I assure you. I'm tired of these lies! <laughs> Not only will Mr. Butler be leaving immediately, but he insists that you paint over his picture on the wall. A beautiful woman makes a good point. I don't know who you are, but you're fantastic. Without honor, a man is nothing. You know what, Lydia? Hideki? I hear you. This is all wrong. I never liked how they did my chin anyway. Russell, cancel my reservations. Very well, sir. Shall I give your regards to Arthur? <laughs> Lydia, you are so beautiful when you're fighting for a man. Why don't you join Hideki and me and I'll buy you a drink? I would, but I'm engaged to Jeb Denton. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> and here he is now. Congratulations, Jeb. Thank you. Lydia made me kiss some ass, but it works. You're a lucky man, Jeb. Well, it's nice, but uh, I'm sure I'll get bored looking at that face after a while. Claude! Hello, Claude. Claude! 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 couldn't have waited until 5 a.m. I mean, that's, that's just great, Carl. Oh, she's so in tune with me. 
She figured out I have a fear of rejection. She, she said, I'm like a molar. Big strong tooth on the outside, vulnerable periodontal membrane and dentin on the inside. <laughs> oh, she's so smart. You know what? I figured out how to describe her too. She's like a daffodil. Really? How so? That, that's all I have. I, uh, I like daffodils. Well, then that's all you need. <laughs> Yeah, but Claude... <laughs> you know, you were pretty hard on old Viv. <laughs> the way you went on and on about her being blunt. <laughs> I guess I was pretty blunt about that. <laughs> uh, well, all is not lost, because Miss Blunt wants us to have dinner with you. She wants to hang out with me? Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. I don't think I can, though. Why not? I just don't like her. 